Hey guys, what's up? This is Garmin. Welcome to the Invincible on PC. I almost said on the PC. Uh, but this is a game taking place in space. I almost want to say it probably has a little bit of horror, but I'm not actually fully sure because I've been trying to avoid a lot of the more recent material because I, I want to know the story as we go into this. But this is a space game and, you know, things just horribly go wrong in space, so we're going to see what ends up happening. Uh, as a quick disclaimer, I did receive a free review code from the developer, so thank you for that. Let's go ahead and jump into the Invincible. The Dragonfly, a small research unit of the Interplanetary Commonwealth with a crew of six, travels the distant regions of space. After visiting many worlds and exploring numerous planets, the research mission comes to an end. However, on the way home, there's one more task waiting for the crew. Novik gets the, the mineral, but the cost of a broken leg in immense pain. The Astrogator's accident doesn't stop the crew from happily celebrating the end of their research cycle. It was a time of creating deep bonds and feeling unstoppable. Victorious, they set course home and go for a well-deserved rest in the hibernation chambers. And then that's where we were going to wake up, right? Probably, well, this isn't a cryo chamber. Where am I? In a, my head. <sighs> Marit? Anybody? Hello? Why am I in my spacesuit? Is this an amnesia kind of situation where I just don't remember what happened? Oh yeah, I can do it. I can press S to go backwards as well. Base, this is Dr. Yasna. I need backup. Base, come in. I have a... Uh, uh, I'm showing disturbing symptoms. A brain fog, severe pain in the frontal lobe. Confusion. I've got a fucking really bad migraine. Help me out. Ugh. Last glance, there were no serious injuries. And yeah, I'm quite concerned. I don't even know how I got here. Oh, well, here is. Backup needed, I repeat. Do you hear me? I appreciate how professional Yasna seems to be. All right, do I have anything in this, this pack? Oxygen radio. All right, I've got a communication module. It looks a little frayed, though. Oh, bollocks! Base? I heard you for a moment. My receiver's dead, but the transmitter... may still be working. All right, I've got one-way communication. I, I'm just gonna keep randomly chiming in over the radio. It. I have two solid hectobars in the tank. That's enough for several hours. Yeah, unless I get a hole in my mask or something. Hey, I've got food! Oh no, it's a radio. Shit. <laughs> Just like I thought. Nothing. <laughs> I'm on my own. The beacon can't be detected either. What's... what's this? Wait, no! There was other stuff! Shit! I didn't... I didn't want to close it. I just was... <laughs> I thought I was opening, like, a different compartment. Oh, let's see if the past me hasn't failed the present me. And let's hope she took notes. We've got a map. Are we on Regis 3? It doesn't ring any bells. And my crew have no way to tell me. So I report that I have no recollection of this planet. The last thing I remember. Hang on. We've closed the research cycle. We, we were already in hibernation. Flying back. Is my probably crash? A side effect of metabolic depression. That would be bizarre. For some reason, our crew split into two groups. The first one set up camp. I wonder if I was with them. Or am I on my way there? 
Well, we know that somewhere there's some kind of maybe ocean or body of water. Both groups landed in the same place. I gotta figure out my current location. Did two landers to the surface. We don't usually do this. Wait, oh, we didn't crash. The first one broke. The first group explored the ocean with no biologist. It's weird. And the other one, just me, took a different route. Hey, it says camp over there. Maybe there was some other... Leading to... Some kind of location. Top priority, get to the camp. Right. I was heading straight to the camp. He must be somewhere near. Give me a sign. Send up a flare, the probe. Anything. Okay. I'm gonna head to the camp, but I'll be keeping an eye out for you. Landmarks. Well done, past me. <laughs> You didn't disappoint after all. Croco? <laughs> oh, I sound like... I need to stop doing this. Hey, crocodile. Where are you? Well... That looks like a crocodile. That has an interesting shape of a crocodile indeed. We have the first one. I need one more. Well, we also know where the dog I'm is, too. For something that resembles a dog. Doggo! Bingo! I found the dog! I report that I have established my position. Time to hit the road. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Do I get to use this map over and over again? What if I want to identify the needle location? I mean, I know we're here, but yeah, I want to we'll be extra sure. Hey, what's with that bright green yellow light in the sky? I would think that's a star, but I feel like that's got to be something else. All right, so I get to use my map. If I press tab, uh, I do get to see myself moving on the map, too. I can change the pages that I'm on and also navigate to the other more particular zoomed-in sections. Uh, can I open up my pack? I can pull out my little doodad. What is this? More dropped equipment. I must have hit the ground pretty hard. Like up there? A metal detector. Dr. Gorski, you won't be pleased. More equipment to repair. The detector's dead. Actually, it's peculiar. Why would I have one with me? Deposit expiration isn't my thing. I'll have to ask Merritt about that. Hey, we're trying to keep an eye out for something. I'm in a canyon. Which doesn't make it easy to navigate. Oh, I hope the data's trustworthy and you're close by. Alright. Well, looking at my map, there's three branching paths here. Tracker. Oh! I have something on the tracker. I assume it's no one from the crew, so perhaps it's my beacon. All right, we'll make my way over there. I was tempted to go just straight to the right, towards Crocodile. But the tracker's indicating something close over here towards the middle path. Huh, there's water on this desert planet. Warm, uh, getting warmer. Well, <laughs> hmm. maybe it's not water. Another liquid that did not allow the biosynosis to form. It won't be easy to replenish drinking supplies. Not without tests. Filtration, as we all remember. Third rule. What's the third rule? Flashback! Oh! 
double check on Yasna? I was about to. Morning. Already awake. Good. My body might be awake, but my brain is still in the fridge. I wouldn't be so sure, my dear. Clearly your sense of humor was first awake. <laughs> now, try to get up, slowly. Dr. Gorski doesn't look so well. How are you holding up, Gorski? Don't get up just yet. Is it really so hard for you to remember a couple of simple rules? I have to stretch my legs. They're numb. Hibernation will do that. Just sit for a while. Yeah, we'll sit up, take a little bit of a breather, get acclimated. Whew. Here, take it and remember the third rule. Yes, I know. Stay hydrated. In small sips. Why small sips? Always the first one to get up. I don't know how you do it, Marit. It's a matter of habit. After so many cycles of cryogenic sleep, one either gets used to it or becomes a tortoise. Yeah, this is a small hibernation pile. Pavel, will you help me here? Sure, I'm coming. This is not our system. Has anyone noticed we're in the wrong place? Kovel, it's not a good time. Yasna, look for yourself. This is not the right planet. You shouldn't be walking yet. I gotta go see what's going on outside the window, though, Kovel, Mary. could you stop it? I'm telling you, we woke up in the wrong place. Yes, we heard you. Enough of this, Yasna. Uh, third rule. Crew. Astrogator. Debating chamber in 15 minutes. Uh, this can't be good. Guess we'll find out. But first, here, hold on to it and remember. I guess I'll stay hydrated. Uh, all right, something's like right around the corner from us here. Ah. Got you. I found it. My beacon. Look for me on your trackers. I'm gonna go investigate this little <sighs> pond here, the mysterious liquid. It's safe to walk in. Not melting my suit, so like that's a positive. Huh. I think I see our ship. Ah. You're not leaving without me, are you? I knew that's the thing. I was like, that couldn't be like an actual representation of a star when you have all these regular, normal looking stars above. Let me see something. I think we're getting comic book pages. Oh yeah, look at that. Yasna, the dragonfly's astrobiologist, wakes up all alone, disoriented and amnesiac in an unfamiliar place. She hopes that someone is still receiving her messages despite the connection issues. Yasna discovers that she is on a desolated planet called Regis III. Wanting to learn more, she heads to a nearby camp of her crew. Along the way, she manages to find scattered equipment, including a metal detector that she hardly ever uses. Right, that's something I'll have to check occasionally. I don't want to check for every single page we get, especially if it's just basically doing a recap of what we're doing. But there might be pages there that give us extra insight into information we're not privy of, like... Okay. Moving on. I picked up on the implication that she might be a biologist, and she was looking out the map. But I wasn't sure. Yeah, okay, I wrote my own. That's why she was like, why would they head off to the ocean without a biologist, without me? check out underneath the crocodile see if there's anything over there I, I am curious to see what direction this goes oh jeez okay if I hold shift for too long she starts like her vision starts getting all blurry I'm about to like keel over here <sighs> time to go that star does uh, 
That star is really ominous. volcanically active. Ash outbursts and extreme temperature changes may explain the extinction of local fauna and flora. But it's all just too idyllic. There's no dust in the air. The sky is clear and the soil looks like laterite to me. Perhaps not highly fertile, but not entirely barren. Well, there could be some spots inside of like caves and stuff and that are fine. Planet. Such storms last for several hundred days. I hope it's not one of them. Well, I don't know. Maybe we won't go into it, but considering well, Murphy's Law, <laughs> <laughs> we might end up down there anyways. Continue marching towards the camp. I mean, I don't know where the camp is more than visually, but I... Uh, Keeping an eye out. Okay, I think that's the way we need to go. Which means I'm doubling back over here to get an extra view of the sandstorm. go down here instead? Wow. How kind of them to give me these varying paths that all meet up. listening to her little humming. We've got a planet and a moon, or well maybe that is also a moon and that's a moon and we're on the main planet. I can already see the camp. Over 400 meters in a straight line. I, I see you. Can you hear me? We're not getting any answers. That's not good. I just need to get down from here. I'm, am I about to take another amnesiac fall? I can't get down this way. I could attach a rope though. But uh, for some reason, I don't have one with me. I could slide down this. Here the ground slopes a little more gently, which doesn't mean it's completely flat. Oh well, if it catches me, so be it. This suit will hold. Yeah, that is pretty close. All right, I guess we're gonna take the, the sloping edge. Because I don't think it'd be wise to try walking all the way back for the rope, unless that is exactly what I should do. Because there are also some other paths or seemingly other paths. My curiosity has me at the very least seeing if I can go back to the rope. No. No point in going back this way. All right, fine. <sighs> to be fair, while the mo the rope is marked on our map, that doesn't mean it's accessible. Right? Like what a she probably was using the rope to climb down, fell down it, hit her head inside the suit, and that's what caused her to forget. All right. I want to see you as soon as possible. I'll take a chance. I don't think there's any other way for me to go if you don't want to fucking go backwards, so... <laughs> huh. 
That really wasn't that bad. Oh, oh, that was less than ideal. But I'm okay. The suit's fine too. And we even got a couple of comic book pages. Trying to reach her crew as soon as possible, Yasna takes excessive risk, which could easily lead to her mutilation or death. Wow, well, we, why do you gotta put it like that? Jeez. I do wonder if there is some like different ending stuff going on in this or like different branching paths like oh, whoopsie I went a little bit too fast visibility could be better now I'm gonna die because I, I, I made Yasna risk taker hey whatever happens happens I know what direction I'm going. Uh, I... I hope. I just gotta keep myself oriented towards this rock wall here. Uh, or I can fucking pick black out. I get lost in the storm? I was heading to... To the camp! Impossible. I'm much closer to my destination. I must have walked for some time. But... I don't remember it. Did... Did I black out again? Oh, I've got serious head injury or something. Still got my beacon on, though. Yeah, and it basically looks... I mean, it actually doesn't look like I went too far. That looks like the area I was standing on right over there. Send Hopper closer to the camp. Find a place to land. I need to get back to Dragonfly as soon as possible. Go to the infirmary and do a full set of tests on myself. Yeah, we don't remember this whole little journey here, but I'm... I'm getting there. Oh boy. Is there a path up here I could take instead? Go through the cliff walls, maybe? Because I don't know about going further down. Ah, screw it. At least the sandstorm seems to have, like, eased up a little bit. Press some random buttons on my keyboard to see if there's anything else. Okay, M pulls up the map as well. This tab. Q and E aren't really doing anything. We know spacebar can be used to, like, talk to ourselves and then T pulls out this which I'm sure will come in handy <laughs> since it's the only other thing I can pull out <sighs> and maybe if we're lucky there won't be anybody dead inside the camp and they'll just be chilling out like oh hey Yasna mm -hmm. Celestial body. I remember you. 
Regis third satellite. R three zero three. It's got a preset of rings. Astrogator, sir. Crew. Doctor Gorski, right on time. Any updates? We have a set of data from the near surface probe. Uh, great. How's the activity? Zero, zero, and two. So, less than nothing. Atmosphere? Nitrogen, 78%. Argon, 2%. Carbon dioxide, zero. Methane, 4%. The rest is oxygen. Uh, wait, that's 16%. With oxygen concentration as such, there should be life. At least some microbes, and yet we have detected no traces. Yeah, we'll get to that later. Let's finish with the probe readings first. Air radioactivity? It's virtually zero. In the world of paradise. No radioactivity, no endospores, no bacteria, no mold, no viruses, nothing. Just the oxygen. If there were no living organisms on the continent, there shouldn't be this much of it. What if life develops on some other continents here? No, I doubt it. Insulation outside the equatorial zone is weak. You don't see how thick the polar ice caps were, Doctor. I can guarantee a minimum of five miles of ice sheet, potentially six. Mm, that's true. There's more chance of something in the ocean. Some seaweed, algae. But why didn't life migrate to the land? Could be because of hard radiation. Mm, I don't think so. According to the probe readings, the ground activity is exceptionally low for this part of the galaxy. I wonder if some special kind of drought-intolerant evolution occurred here. That would at least explain some of the abnormalities. Hmm. Anyway, we'll have to take a look under the water. First, it would be good to know what time frame we're working with. These papers don't mean shit to me, but Marriage. I don't know what the yeah, fuck this is all saying. Analysis. It's a bit too early for mature conclusions, but this planet looks old to me. Such a fossilized egg must be at least six billion years old. Besides, the sun's seen better days too. It's almost a red dwarf. Any rare resources, forms, creatures? We can't expect such detailed data, sir. Not from this distance. Yes, we would have to explore the surface. Astrogator, what exactly are we looking for? The value of this planet. For now, it may seem like the pinnacle of nonsense. But I assure you that Regis III is not without worth. Maybe that's because you know something else, With all else, due respect, Astrogator, Astrogator, I have the impression you're not telling us everything. Right? As always, Dr. Koval, your instincts are correct. Please forgive my reticence. My goal was to maintain unimpeded research neutrality. There is indeed a very important factor of interest in this planet. The Alliance. The Alliance? Alliance. The Alliance? Correct. What do they have to do with it? Well, they've sent their most powerful unit here. But to our best knowledge, Condor's traversing a distant quadrant. Well, I'm not talking about the Condor. So, the Invincible? Good guess, Doctor. A steel behemoth with the power to produce billions of kilowatts in a split second, converting it into energy fields that no material body can penetrate. Concentrating it into destructive rays as hot as stars that can reduce a mountain range to dust or evaporate an ocean. Together with its crew of almost a hundred men. Professionals that are neither better nor worse than us. Well, I dare to say we're better trained, Astrogator. Uh, they are, however, unquestionable masters of propaganda. I know that some accomplishments they brag about are very much far-fetched. But the capabilities of the Invincible are not subject to doubt. And we as the scientific body should sever ourselves from the emotional and symbolic facade. In other words, we cannot ignore facts just because we don't like them, Mr. Cole. All right. But where do we stand in all this, together with our, may I say, not quite as numerous staff? Despite our modest forces, we still have a chance to gain a critical advantage over the Alliance, while avoiding confrontation. Okay, uh, and how would we do that? Simple. We leave this planet before the Invincible arrives here. Oh. Which is when, exactly? Well, they're still far away. <sighs> Astrogator, please, how much time do we have to conduct safe research? Thirteen days. That's, That's no time lot. to lose, then. I appreciate your eagerness, Koval. Dr. Crowther, do we need full gear? Mm -hmm. Definitely. 
Also, I caution you against taking off your helmets for a prolonged duration. This amount of methane is not neutral. Breathing the local atmosphere will lead to saturation drop, and you may start showing symptoms of mild brain damage, feel stupefied. But uh, don't worry, not before an hour or even a couple of hours. I see. Dr. Gorski, will you program Artie to collect samples? Of course. Marit, Krauter, please prepare for the surface. Koval, you two. You're leaving early in the morning. And what about me? You're staying on board, Doctor. But Astrogator! Uh, this is not up for debate. I need you here. As you well know, there's not much work to do for a biologist on Regis Three. Yeah, there if is. Any. I need to double check to see well, if there's... I ordered to stay. What the hell am I doing here? Well, maybe they had trouble and we were the reinforcements. All right, let's get up. What the fuck is the Alliance, though? Is that a human group? Clearly they must be quite powerful for that, worried about them. The head injury appears to be serious. Yasna blacks out again. Regis 3 issue. The Dragonfly crew is awakened from hibernation in emergency mode after the ship came to a mysterious, uh, came close to mysterious planet Regis 3. Despite their evident concerns, Novik doesn't immediately reveal the details of this unexpected mission. Regis 3 appears to be of no research value, yet the Commonwealth's rival faction, the Alliance, is sending its most powerful unit there, the USCA, Invincible. So are we just here to try and beat them to research stuff? Oh. Oh, thank goodness. Not everyone's in the field. Alright. We're getting what seems like two signals. Two beacon signals from the camp. This is Dr. Yasna reporting. Do you copy? I'm entering the campgrounds. Is anyone out there? Oh. Oh, it's just an Androbot. Androbot. Androbot, guide me to the nearest crew member. Androbot, guide two people. Androbot, locate human. Androbot, respond. Damn. Ah, oh, Dr. Gorski, have you made changes to the Androbot's algorithms <laughs> without telling anyone? <laughs> Again. Oh, well. Never mind. Hey there, Androbot. How are you doing? Oh, uh, maybe if I... RT, default position. I don't know what's wrong with you, buddy, but you clearly don't want to cooperate. Maybe it's been sabotaged. Or maybe it's been so long that it's getting faulty. Huh. Let's see if there's anyone in this little camp. Hey, a person! And they're rocking back and forth. They're alive! Hey! Oh, Dr. Crowther! Didn't you hear me earlier? Doctor. Is everything all right? He's been stupefied by the planet's oxygen. Doctor, please, look at me. A report that I've located Dr. Krauter. He's in bad shape. I'm going to examine him now. Hello, anyone there? I repeat, Krauter is in a serious condition. He's mumbling to himself like he doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> Where was that? In his radio? Excuse me. Yasta, can you hear me? Astrogator. Finally. I've been listening to you for two hours now. My receiver is dead. No need to explain yourself, Doctor. I know everything. The transmitter was still working, so I heard your reports. Glad you didn't lose your head. Wait, please. I need to reconnect. Am I going to fix up my own systems? Testing. One, two, three. Ah, copy you, 
Doctor. Loud and clear. Wonderful. But to the point. As I understand it, there's only Dr. Crowther at the camp. And he's not well. What happened to him? I... I was just about to examine him. <laughs> Dr. Crowther, please don't be startled. I need to take your hand. Temperature normal. Pulse too. O2 saturation is fine. There's nothing physically wrong with the doctor. He's not a fan of the light. respond properly. Look at my finger. No delay in reactions. Yet no response to verbal communication. None. Conclusions, doctor. Akinesia, mutism, impoverishment of mimic movements, and reaction to stimuli. These are all symptoms of stupor. But it's difficult to pinpoint the cause of the disorder. We need to quickly perform a complete set of tests and focal plate tomography of his brain. We can close his helmet. Otherwise, and get him real oxygen. I won't be able to say anything more. I'll prepare the infirmary. But first things first, Lambda. We need to get you all on board. Everyone, not just Dr. Crowther. Okay, what should I do? Please look for the mission log. Should include crucial data about the crew's activities. We have there three more are. people to find. Okay. We still need to designate a place for the landing. All right, that works. Uh, Krauta, do you just keep on making random noises in here? I guess you get to chill out for the rest of this mission. Hello? A anyone else here? I found Dr. Krauta. Mission log. It's not a mission log, but... It will do. Dr. Crowther kept records. Meticulous as always. What's in there? Well, we've got some... Um, initial analysis, some words here. Initial analysis of the samples revealed nickel, iron, mag... Uh, mag... <laughs> I want to be like manganese, manganese, <laughs> beryllium and titanium in the composition. I would give a lot to understand what it actually is. Quick theory. A giant nickel iron meteor splashed into the atmosphere of Aegis 3, melting its surface millions of years ago. No, wait, scratch that. The shape of structures con contradicts it. Okay. The most important thing is probably the landing coordinates. BA2316. Noting. 316. Excellent. I'm uploading the data. Starting calibration. Hmm. Dr. Gorski has moved away from the research sector to the west. Ah, that's right. You followed those deposits of metal. Metal? That's why we have detectors. Correct. Mine died, but Crowther had one as well, didn't he? Like yeah, it's right there. The crew, Doctor. What is this about? Except your Sint Oxiat. What is that about? Are you looking for the detector? Yeah, just a sec. Got it. Please make sure it works. I don't understand why it wouldn't. It's a rather reliable piece of equipment. Like everything around, that's already broken. <laughs> Touche, sir. Okay. Checked. I'm leaving the tent. I didn't even realize my, head, my mask was up. We're gonna say bye to crowd to let him know, even if he can't fully understand. Letting him know we're we're getting out of here, buddy. All right, Krauta. Uh, she won't say anything, but I gotta go find the rest of our crew. Get us out of here. That sounds storm sealing. Sounds like it's right All over right. us. Now for the robot. It's unresponsive. Yes, I know. I'm currently trying to establish a connection. Can I help somehow? You must look for the others, Doctor. I'll take care of this myself. Get the tin head back on its feet remotely and secure Crowther. I have everything I need, just. 
Is something wrong with the connection, sir? It's not working. I'm not sure why. There's a relay transmitter in the camp, so the signal should be strong enough. A relay? Huh. This thing right here? Yasna, what are you up to? One sec. I'm looking for it. <sighs> what about the rest of the crew? You're gonna make them wait? If the Androbot isn't working properly, I can't just leave Krauter like this. He might hurt himself. Uh, fine. Proceed as you deem fit. I've got bad news. Our signal is far too weak to restart the Androbot. A relay malfunction? Not exactly. It's completely fried. I don't think a sandstorm could cause such damage. Well, that's irrelevant now, Doctor. There must be a spare somewhere in the camp. Please search for it. All right, get spare relays. Uh, how do I pull out the metal detector? It isn't giving me like a tutorial for that. No luck. They're not in here. Okay, so Z pops out the binoculars. Oh. Here we go. R pops out the metal detector. I have the extra relay. Excellent. The signal should be back as soon as it's turned on. And we're taking a bunch of them. Okay. Set up the relay in close proximity to the camp. Should have put it in like the same general location. Guess I'm setting up multiple relays just in case. I'll put it, uh, just in case it only lets me put one. I'll try and get it into, like, a good high ground position. Cool. Very good. I'm connected. Is it gonna work? We'll see. I rebooted the systems. That should help. Good, good. It's receiving instructions. Ugh. I don't know if the Androbot should already be doing something. Is it still frozen? Yes. Unfortunately. Hmm. The positronic brain has correct readings. Receptors. Hmm. We can give it a closer look. Hey, buddy. <gasps> it worked. He moved. Finally. Artie should be walking now. Does he? His positional data hasn't changed. He's... <laughs> well, you can see that he really wants to go, but still can't. Uh, please check his legs. Hmm. Could be the server motor. Ah, that's it. Got you, you tin bastard. Uh, thank you, Doctor. I won't hold you any longer. Go find the others while I finish here. That's an order. Yes, sir. Roger that, Astrogator. Anything else in here that maybe I could take for me? We've got some supplies. Probably should take some water, but uh, I guess we're not going to need it. We'll make our way towards Igorski. I'll make sure to occasionally pull out my metal detector just in case something is uh, hiding around. I'm getting, you know, the distinct feeling that there might be some things I'm able to find. Excavation site. Okay, well, we're not looking for. The excavation site technically. Was that a loading screen? Finally, it works. Quota, five meters. 